Hey guys, so here I am at school at the lab. Um, I'm gonna show you guys how to do an EKG. We are going to put this video together. I will get it posted for you today. So then you guys can actually um, figure out how to do your um, EKGs. Hopefully it'll help you guys out exponentially. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go over the EKG machine itself. So here is our EKG machine. This one here, we're gonna turn it on from the back. And then as we turn it on, it's gonna go ahead and give us um, a whole bunch of readings. These are our electrodes, as we had talked about um, in the lecture. So they actually do have the label of where they go. So if you look, this one says LA, which is left arm. You have L, uh, or sorry, RL, which is right leg. You have RA, which is right arm, LL, left leg. And then as we look here, we've got all of the V um, for the chest leads. Here's what an EKG will look like. As I told you guys, it will actually have all of the leads listed on there. So if you look there, you see one, two, three, AVR, AVL, AVF, V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, and V6. So now I'm going to go ahead and get my patient ready for the EKG. Hello Colton, today we are going to be doing an EKG. Have you ever had an EKG done before? Yes, I have. You have, great. Do you have any questions for me? Um, actually, how, ba how does the EKG work exactly? The EKG, what we're going to do is we're going to put 10 stickers on your body. So two on your um, upper arms up here and then one over here. So one on each arm, one in each by your deltoid. Then we're going to do one on each leg on the inside of your calf. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to put six right across your chest. So as I do this, we're going to have you put on a gown and it doesn't hurt at all. Okay. Um, it doesn't shock you. It doesn't do anything. You are able to just lie still and breathe normal and then it will tell us how your heart is looking and we'll give it to our provider and our provider will be able to read it and see what's going on. Any, Interesting. Any other questions? No. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a gown and I'm going to have you take off your shirt and you're going to be able to put your gown on. When I give you this gown, let me see if I can find it real quick. When I give you a gown, you're going to put it on so the openings go into the front just like you would a bathrobe or a jacket. Okay. Okay. Any questions? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, knock, knock, knock. Are you all set? Yep, I'm all set. Perfect. So what I'm going to have you do, Colton, is go ahead and lay down. Okay. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna just leave this on you real quickly there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and pull out this little thing. I know you don't need it much for your legs, but we'll pull it out a little bit. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull up your pants, or if you can pull your pants up just a little bit to your knees and pull your socks down for me as well, bud. Perfect, thank you so very much. Sure. Great, so then what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to clean you off with some alcohol or some um, hand sanitizer just to make sure that the stickers stick really, really, really well, okay? okay. It's going to be cold. It will be cold, and I'm very sorry. So, you guys, these are the stickers that we're going to use, and as I told you guys, it's going to be 10 stickers per patient, and so um, the 10 stickers, so there's 10 on a pack, so it's kind of a key that if you run out of stickers and you're not done yet, you did something wrong, or if you have a sticker left over, then you did something wrong as well. Well, so now I'm going to try to set up the um, my phone somehow to be able to record what I'm doing. So here we go. Okay, guys. So now we're going to go ahead and clean off our patient. So I know Colton um, is a little boy, so we can do this. If this was a female, what I would do with her is I would actually just make sure that I'm opening just like this and cleaning just a little bit here on the sternum. So we would just do a little bit of hand sanitizer here. Oops, sorry, buddy, I know that's cold. Then we're just going to go like this, and we're going to clean it off. And then what would happen is I would go up around here. Colton, can you hold that right there for me with your other hand, please? Other hand, please. There you go. And then what I would do is I would clean right up around um, the breast in the armpit area. So I would also go ahead and clean off just a little spot. So I'm just gonna get a little bit more hand sanitizer here. A little spot here on his, <laughs> up there on his deltoid. We're also gonna do on his calves here. He's freezing. And then we're gonna come up here and do the other side. So as you guys see, I actually walk around my patient. I don't wanna lean over them just because it's a little bit uncomfortable and sometimes they're not kiddos. So it makes it a little bit harder to do so. So now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these little tabs on his um, arms. So see how the tabs are here? We're just going to stick it on there just like so, okay? 
and we're going to come down here to the legs <laughs> and we're going to go ahead and put that tab there right where we cleaned poor little guy's got goosebumps then we're going to go to this one right here oh. and then we're going to come on up over here to the other side and then we're going to put one on his upper arm here Woo! as well so those are my limb leads so both um arms and both legs so if you remember in our lecture there was nothing that had the right leg going to it the reason why is because our right leg is a ground wire this is what creates the entire circuit for the ekg so now i'm going to do v1 this is where it gets a little bit confusing so v1 is going to go as i said fourth intercostal space to the right of the sternum here's colton's sternum right here so then i'm going to count down four intercostal spaces so what I'm gonna do, you're gonna put your fingers right in those, not me, you, me, not you. <laughs> We're gonna put those fingers right in those intercostal spaces and feel. So that's one, then that's two. You can actually see where there's a divot to make it a little bit easier for you guys. There's three, and then there's four. So they're about a finger width apart. So then what we're gonna do, right where that fourth one intercostal goes, I'm gonna put this lead, and it's gonna go right there. Then I'm gonna go on over to the other side and I'm gonna do the exact same thing. So then B2 is going to go fourth intercostal space to the left of the sternum. And as I said in the lecture, um, V1 and V2 are the only ones that actually go in the fourth intercostal space, and V1 is the only one that goes to the right of the sternum. All the rest of them go to the left of the sternum where the heart belongs. So I did V1, V2. So like in the lecture, I'm gonna skip V3 to find V4, and I'm just gonna go ahead and open this up just to give you guys a good um, view of your landmarks. So here's Colton's clavicle right here. We're gonna go midway between that clavicle, which is right here, and we're gonna go straight down. So on him, it's gonna be nipple line. So it's it's gonna go fifth intercostal space and as you can see I'm in that intercostal space right there fifth intercostal space mid clavicle so then we're gonna put this guy right here then we're gonna go ahead and do v3 v3 is gonna be midway between v2 and v4 in that fifth intercostal space so here's that intercostal space again you can see me right in that intercostal space right there so we're gonna put this one right here and then we're gonna go ahead and do v6 V6 is gonna be the fifth intercostal space, mid axillary. So see if you can see that I'm actually in that. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting a kick out of this because I can actually tickle him and he can't do anything about it. So fifth intercostal space, mid axillary. So here's Colton's armpit, whoop. So we're gonna go in the middle of that armpit and it's gonna go like right here. Boop. <laughs> I know. Then we're going to do V5, which is going to be midway between V4 and V6 in that same fifth intercostal space. <laughs> I'm just going to do that just to get them. Okay. So then I'm going to put that guy right there. So now that I have all of my leads, so we have V1, <clears throat> V2, V3, V4, V5, V6, then we have his left arm his right arm, and then both of his lower limb leads. So now what I'm gonna do, guys, is I'm gonna go ahead and hook up the electrodes. So once I hook up these electrodes, we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna set this right over Colton's belly here. There we go. And when we hook these up, like I said, we're just gonna read them. So this one here says, left arm so it's going to be colton's left arm not my left arm so colton's left arm is actually going to be over here i was like that's the right i know it's difficult when you're trying to do it then we're going to do the left leg so ll then we're going to do his right arm and these are just like little clips guys if you can see they just clip open and close okay so then this one's gonna go right here Doop. And then we'll go ahead and do his right leg. Okay, so then, as I said, these are all gonna have the proper um, location, so V2, so this is V1, this is V2 here. So V2 is gonna go right there. Okay, then we've got V5. So V5 is gonna go right here. Okay, then we have V1, which will be right here. Then we have V6, which is gonna be right here. And then we're gonna have V3, which is gonna be right here. And last but not least, we have V4. 
So once my patient is completely hooked up, just like Colton is, oh. we're just gonna have them relax and he's not gonna move. He's just gonna go to a happy place for a second. Then I'm gonna pull on over here to the EKG. So if you look here, that's a very good EKG. If I'm looking at it there, you can see, um, I know it's kind of hard, but you can see all the PQRSTs. Um, you can see that it's a nice straight baseline. But right now I want Colton to wiggle around for me. Go ahead, wiggle around for me. So if you see him wiggling around, you can see that that's a wandering, okay, that's enough. And is Colton's back laying still again, that wandering baseline, somatic tremor, everything has disappeared. So I'm gonna have Colton just lie nice and still for me. Go ahead and put your arm back down for me, bud. Nice and still, ask him not to talk to you for just a moment, okay? Then all we're gonna do in this one is we're gonna hit record. And it's recording. Processing. And then this one, we're gonna say, no, we don't wanna save it just because there's a billion of them on here. And then it's gonna go ahead and print out my EKG for me here. So it looks like he may have moved a little bit here. Um, and so I'm gonna run another one. It's okay, but no worries. Um, actually, maybe. Have you laid nice and still for me again, buddy? So we would not want to give that to our provider if it's not nice and straight. So we're going to have him lay nice and still for me again. And then once he's nice and still for me again, we're going to hit record. I keep picking that up. That's weird. Great, again, we do not want to save it. I'll go ahead and reprint it out for us here. There we go, that one looks much better as you can tell. There's no wandering baseline. Everything looks good. I would be able to give that to my provider for them to actually look at. Yes, it does talk up here about some abnormalities, but we don't um, believe those in our EKGs because our um, that's the machine that sometimes is really over oversensitive, and so we don't actually really pay attention to that. So don't do that. You would just take this to your provider, you would give it to your provider, and then your provider would decide what they would like to do at that point in time. So now that we have got the EKG all finished with our patient, we would go ahead and unhook them completely. I know sometimes people- Can I rip them off? You can. Sometimes like in the emergency room, let's take these off, don't rip these off. Um, in the emergency room, they'll leave these stickers on. We don't wanna leave them on our patients because they can cause rashes and irritation and we definitely do not want to do that. One thing I did not talk about, guys, is when we do these EKGs, sorry, I know I'm crazy with the camera right now, we need to make sure that the cords are nice and straight. There's hundreds of little wires in there that if they get kinked up, then the EKG is not going to um, work again because the wires now have kinks in them. So I'm letting my patient unhook himself even though it takes him forever. So I'm gonna help him out a little bit here. So the biggest thing we need to remember, guys, is our patients most of the time who are there to I get EKGs really done um, are there for shortness <gasps> of breath. Sorry, oh! baby. <laughs> oh, oh! <laughs> that one hurt, sorry. Shortness of breath or chest pain or what have you. So I want you to stay laying there for a moment. So we don't ever just wanna tell our patient, okay, hey, go ahead and sit up and then walk away from them. We actually want to hand them our hand and kind of help them sit up, okay? And then I will put my hand on my back of my patient for just a second and make sure that they're not feeling dizzy and that they're feeling okay. Are you feeling okay? Yeah. Not too dizzy? Mm -hmm. Great. So then I'm going to have you go okay. ahead. I'm going to step out. I'm going to give your EKG to your provider and I will have you get changed. And then your provider will be back in in just a moment. Okay? okay. Thank you, sir. Sure. So back to the EKG now. So now what I wanted to show you guys is a cardiac cycle. So each cardiac cycle um, is going to consist, let me draw it here because it's really tough for me to hold this right here. Okay, so that is one complete cardiac cycle starting from here to there. So if we look here, this little bump, if I can do it, oh, it's not working with my hand in the way, hold on. That little line that I just drew right there, it's not in focus, what's going on here? There we go, that's your P wave. And then as we go down, this little guy right there, 
would be Q. This little guy right here would be R. This would be S here. And then this big bump here would be T. So if I go to any of my other um, EKG um, waves, I can actually do the exact same thing. So we'll go right here and let me do these real quick for you guys. So it'll be P, okay? And then you have Q, R, S and T. And it's everywhere, guys. So even if I go to this guy up here, which is my V3, there'd be P, then Q, R, S, and T. So if there was a U wave, you would actually see it right here, but Colton does not have a U wave, which is great. So um, hopefully this really helps you guys with the setup of your EKG, what your EKG looks like. I would like you guys to... Um, please go to the discussion board once you guys watch this video and document if you guys understood it or if you have any other questions. Thank you guys so very much. And again, I appreciate all of your guys' um, hard work on this online as we try to get through to this crazy COVID-19. Thank you guys.